Hey. You. Yeah, you. I am American Jesus. And these are my opinions. I'm so glad you came by. Today, I want to jump right into what we're going to talk about. The top three sayings that you can ignore if you're forced to go to Narcotics Anonymous or whatever and all the things with the twelves and the disciples because there were 12 disciples. If you thought that's a coincidence, it's not. 10 is a number that we generally are more comfortable with. That's why everything that we do is a factor of 10. So we can count it on our fingers. Not 12. 12 is a religious number. So um, these are the three top sayings that you can ignore uh, if you are forced to go. And why? Number one, stick with the winners. So of course, logic would dictate that we first must deconstruct the sentence the biggest thing we need to do is we need to define what a winner is. Now, ironically enough, a winner is not an individual who stays clean. In, in the literature, it, staying clean, albeit seems very important or sober. When I say clean, I mean clean and sober because they're interchangeable. Um, and they are interchangeable. And if you think that they're not interchangeable, you're dumb. Uh, they mean the same thing as constructs. Ironically enough, a, a program that talks about sobriety a lot or talks about you know clean time and talks about staying clean does not really rank clean very high or sober very high as uh, an individual who's a winner. A person could have, oh, I don't know, 22 years clean um, and still, ironically enough, not be labeled as a winner because he doesn't regurgitate the literature verbatim, but analyzes it and tries to figure out how he can incorporate that into his own uh, schema. No, that's not winning. You know, staying clean for very long periods of time, having any tons of happiness, uh, with yourself, um, self-reflection, exploring your own uh, internal uh, motivations and desires, um, studying and learning about culture and society, uh, you know, the stuff that people that um, are basically had fulfilling lives did with their life um, makes you a big fat loser, according to these 12-step fellowships. Um, because it's basically a derivative of a religion, and religions don't like people who have the smarts. Um, because people who ask too many questions start people around them asking questions. Yeah. Where are all the clean people if we rarely have seen anybody fail? Where are all the, the sober people? I mean, yeah, there's lots of people here, and they say they're sober, but they haven't been sober for decades. I mean, maybe one or two, or maybe ten. But it can't be all of them. It can't be all the ones that came through the door. I mean, it's probably a very small percentage of the people that came through the door seeking help. Hmm. So what is a winner? What do you think it is? A winner is what you think it is. A winner is a reflection of what you think is important. We had this jackass that came around the meetings a lot and had lots of money, and he ended up sponsoring a huge portion of the meeting. All the young men just, just pranced around him and were like, Oh my God, you have so much money. I mean, spirituality, it's, it's just, how do, I, how do I work the steps to make lots of money like you made lots of money? Now, granted, most of those people are gone. The uh, gentleman in question um, 
is now snoring or doing, I don't know how he's doing, but he's doing tremendous amounts of cocaine and heroin from what I understand, allegedly. Um, but I do know that he is doing dope. And, uh, and so is all the people that, he's, that, he's, that he was working with, uh, apparently, a lot of them. Um, you know, divorces and all kinds of fun stuff going on. Um, which, of course, because that's what he taught them was how to have an unhappy marriage uh, if you're going to get into a marriage. But I think I am a winner. And unfortunately, the literature does not. Um, regardless of my years of clean time, regardless of never relapsing, regardless of the fact that I've never had a sponsee die, if I'm not actively working the 12 steps of whatever fellowship I choose to find myself in. Uh, now, the next saying that you can completely outright just flatly ignore is service work is important part of your recovery. Service work is most definitely not an important part of your recovery. Service work is an annoying part of your recovery. If you're in recovery and you're doing service work, you fucked up because generally what happens is that you were in a meeting and nobody wanted to do a particular position and you made the foolish uh you made the foolish mistake of going to group conscience and some jackass uh basically nominated you to be the secretary of the group conscience and you were felt pressured enough and were so people pleasing that you agreed um and now you have to go every month you have to keep track of stuff and everybody's going to tell you exactly what you've done wrong um and no one will ever almost never say thank you and if you ask your sponsor why people don't thank you for the service work you've done he'll say because you don't deserve it because you suck true story um yeah, that, 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 it's your, that you, it's your responsibility to do service work because, and then they'll, it's, it's interesting because then they'll pitch it as something like, oh, well, service work is so great and you should come to our business meetings because they're so much fun. And I was the jackass that was like, no, they're not. They suck. People argue about nothing. You do the same shit over and over again. I could, you could just replay last year's freaking group conscience meetings and in the same shit would happen because you just do the same shit because the people that used to be in group conscience got annoyed and they left and they're either at a different meeting or they relapsed and they're gone so you're going to make the same mistakes they made and the people that have lots of clean time you're going to be like well we don't want to listen to you because you think you know everything because you know everything because you've seen it happen over and over again uh, yes so avoid service work at all costs now i'm not saying that at the end of a meeting don't pick up a chair and put it up um, I'm also not saying that don't go up to the chairperson and say thanks for your service, um, you know, but if you want to have any sanity in your life, avoid service work. It's a trap. It's a trap! Um, but yes, avoid service work. Stay away from it. Sponsor people. Meetings shouldn't really need that many service positions. Uh, you know, they should rotate regularly so people aren't overburdened um, in the positions for very long. Um, and if you made group conscience a place where the people weren't terrible and self-righteous and screaming at each other and dumb um maybe and if you find yourself in service right now and you don't like it quit quit the worst thing that can happen is that the meeting will fail and if the meeting fails 
it may make room for another meeting that people are willing to support. What ends up happening is that people are guilted into doing service work and these meetings continue to limp along and do more damage than they do good because people feel obligated to support it just because it's a meeting. They feel obligated to go to group conscience even though they know that it's terrible as opposed to not going, wait for the meeting to collapse, go to a freaking church and open your own damn meeting. Because right now that meeting's eating up all the attendance and people are going there and tolerating it. Don't do service unless you really feel like you would enjoy it and you really love the meeting. And if you go and start doing service, and you feel like maybe you were wrong, quit. It's not your fault, it's their fault. I never did, but I told my sponsees to. I remember I had a sponsee come to me and he's like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I'd signed up for a year to do service work and now I don't want to do it. And I don't want to be secretary. I hate sitting in those damn group conscience meetings. Everybody's mean all the time. Um, you know, people keep complaining and blah, 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 blah. And I just looked at him and I said, so why are you doing it? Well, because I feel, why do you feel that way? Well, I feel like I should give back. Is being part of the fellowship not giving back? Is being yourself not giving back? Are there other places you can give back to that maybe not are not part of N.A.? And, and, and do you really feel like you're giving back? Do you really feel like you're being part of a solution? No. So walk in there right now and tell them that you're done. That you quit. Give them back their keys. Give them back whatever. And uh, find something else to do to help. Um, we've had, we have a meeting here uh, that uh, is continually toxic. Toxic, 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 toxic. For years... I tried to bring in alternate opinions, but it is so frickin' conservative and judgmental and negative and terrible. And the members who started, who started the member who thinks he started it, which he didn't. There were a lot of people. I started it just as much as he did. Feel like they have ownership over it. Um, and was, but I'm not leaving the meeting. I'm not leaving this meeting because I was here since it began, and that's why it sucks. <laughs> that's why. That's why you don't see a lot of people at the meeting that were <laughs> that are longtime members because you give up eventually and you go somewhere else or you just stop going to meetings. I mean, we've had so many people just go through that meeting and just stop going. Um, it's hysterical. And, and, but the problem is, is that people get guilt tripped into supporting the meeting, donating to the meeting. I didn't donate to the meeting um, because I wasn't there for myself. I was there to help other people. And I felt like the best thing that could happen for those people was if the meeting failed. Because then it would leave room for another meeting to open up that people didn't feel they owned. Nobody owns a meeting. Whether you start a meeting or you don't start a meeting, there's a lot of other people that worked on that meeting. Um, and it's not yours. And especially if you're, if you're using that meeting as a client to sell your product um, and you're using that meeting as a place to find cheap employees, then you're exploiting the meeting. It's not yours. The last thing that uh, I would uh, say that you don't have to really give a shit about is the literature says. The literature says is probably my least favorite thing that people say in meetings. Well, the literature says, well, the literature says what, dummy? Um, 
Because I know what the literature says. I've read it, and it said several things since it was first made. So does that mean that this literature is better than the literature that we first had? Because what if we used to say something else? And why is it so important what this guy wrote down? And that a bunch of people voted on in a group conscience that's run by crazy people and not even really considered when they did the final printing because what they're going to worry about oh well this didn't pass so you know there's not a unanimous uh, agreement on whether or not we should word this sentence this way or that way dude you should sit in freaking a car when they're when they're redesigning the literature and, and just Watch people literally sit there and try to rewrite shit. And I'm just going, dude, they don't care. It's just a no. It's a no vote. They're not going to rewrite jackass. And probably they're just going to print it anyways because this is way too time consuming. And they need to sell books because it's the main way that they make money, even though the groups send money to world, which a lot of people don't know that. That the money you give... At meetings goes to area, and then if area doesn't need it, it goes to region, and if region doesn't need it, we donate it to World Service, which is a corporation. It's a nonprofit corporation, but it is a corporation, and it pays people's salaries. Not mine. A lot of people that donated that dollar don't even have jobs. But there's somebody in California that has a nice job because you donated that dollar. Isn't that nice? And that's why the books are $27,000 a piece. <laughs> so the literature can say whatever the fuck the literature wants to say. Nobody cares. So yeah, so I was at, I was at a group conscience one time and, and this, this lady, who probably the only book she's ever read was the literature. Um, cute. She's cute. She's a cute chick. Pretty hot. Yeah. That was a little dumber. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but anyways. Uh, no, but she was like... We were talking about something. about We were talking about doing a, like a carnival event. You know, because I was like... They were like, oh, let's have a dance in a speaker meeting. And I was like, oh, okay. And let's just have an event that nobody likes and nobody wants to come to and is really boring. Good job. That's what we always do. And uh, I said, why don't we do a carnival? Like we could rent like a bouncy house for the kids and we could, you know, have like different, you know, just, just kind of like when it, with the things that the freaking, you know, that you're that almost every middle school does once a year where the kids put together little games and they have the balloons that you throw the darts at and you win tickets and then if you have enough tickets then you win a prize or if you have the most amount of tickets then you win a prize or, you, or the raffle tickets for something that you give away um, you know and, and, and you know something interesting something different not, not a freaking dance that uh and a, and a speaker. And when we have speaker jams here, I'm not talking about like, you know, an opening speaker and a headliner. I'm talking about like 10 speakers from noon until nine. And then after 10, then that's when the wonderful dance starts that nobody dances at. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, for the love of God, are you, you guys are just sadists. Like, who the fuck wants to come here and listen to 10 speakers? I mean, if you're, if you're spending your Saturday at a meeting listening to 10 speakers, you've got a problem. You're addicted to speakers. And you're not going to stick around. Those people don't stick around. Um, I can tell you that from experience. You know, the people that just kind of throw themselves into this meeting and just start glug, 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 glug. Wow, that's really good Kool-Aid. Um, you know, those people don't stick around because they be, because eventually they become disenchanted. Wow, went off on a tangent there. 
Anyways, um, yeah, so I was like, hey, let's have a carnival. And we can, you know, I went and I looked at you. Hey, I can rent a bouncy house for a couple hundred bucks, you know. Uh, you know, and then we could put together this great flyer about the recovery carnival. Um, and literally this stupid chick is like, well, the literature says that our purpose is to carry the message of recovery. And I look at her and I go, so I voted on it. Of course, it's what it says. I voted for it. it. Doesn't mean anything. And even if it did, how am I not doing that by having a recovery carnival? You know, we could make all of the events recovery step oriented. You know, we'll have twelve little games that you can play that are that are. At least then people would remember the damn steps. <laughs> well, the literature says that. We need to... No, the, you know, that, that's the thing. Is like, it doesn't matter what the fucking literature says. The literature, even in of its... Well, the literature says it's just suggestions. Interesting. You may know what the literature says. If you're in a 12-step fellowship, you may know what the literature says. I knew what the literature said. I, I never got real sick into it and had all those little fucking, you know. I, I remember seeing the, uh, the, the people would say, oh, you need to read the, uh, the first step and highlight everything that pertains to you. And then they would come back and they'd be like, well, I highlighted everything. And I would be like, you don't understand highlighting. You should have just not highlighted anything. Then, because everything has the same level of attention to it now. So it, all you did was just paint a couple of pages orange. What are you doing? Why are you teaching people to be stupid? That, that, that's, you know, somebody somewhere made, said that as a joke. And then people started highlighting everything in order to feel like they were doing the first step correctly. Because correctly is what's important. Anyways... The literature says a lot of stuff. Don't fucking highlight everything in the literature. If you find something you like in the literature, which I have before, don't get me wrong, um, write about it and write about why you like it or what you would change in it or what things, you know, how you interpret it or other interpretations of it that you liked. If you find something you don't like in the, in the literature, write down why you don't like it and you don't agree with it. You don't have to... Do everything the literature says. It is four o'clock in the morning, but it's the best time to do recordings when people are asleep and there's only trains to make noise. Um, but I appreciate you watching this. Uh, whatever is left of it that I cut apart that's in between my rambling insanity. Please like and subscribe. Also hit the little fucking notification bell so that you're notified when others are released because they only really notify you if they're going to make money on them um, and they don't make money off of any of my videos so they don't notify you because they want you to watch videos they make money off of. Um, so there's that. If you, if you have something to say. I would love to read it. Oh, and, and, and there's another thing. If you know of any other groups that, you know, I'm a member of like one or two groups on Facebook. If you know of any other groups that uh, might like to hear some of what I'm saying, because it's not out there a lot. There's some other people that are doing similar things, and there's some other websites. Um, but somebody with a tremendous amount of clean time that has spent so much time in the fellowships... Um, as myself um, may give some people a, a uh, unique perspective even people in the groups and I love people in the groups to watch my videos so if you're a member of any groups that are actually 12 step based groups um, for AA or NA or CA then feel free to post my videos in there because those guys are amazing when they watch this stuff and their head explodes. <laughs> Kid. I was 
inside of something big Do you think that what you did Could bring you back to this 